So, good morning, Miss. Well, it's not good morning. It's good afternoon, isn't it, Des Mitchell? How are we? It, it's definitely good afternoon here. Uh, everything <laughs> is good. Um, I, I can't complain. Um, Looking very healthy, man. Really just just you explain exactly where you are. <laughs> no, I don't want to see your bed. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a, you know, the, everything's marvellous. Brilliant. Where are you exactly for the listeners? I'm in uh, Six Senses Lamu in the Maldives, and I've been here for uh, six months um, since November the 1st. And I'm here till May the 8th, and then I head back to Mallorca. And it's not your first visit, is it? This is my sixth year. <laughs> and it's two degrees here in the UK. What is it exactly in the Maldives? Today is, <laughs> you sure you want to know? No, not at all, but go on. <laughs> Today is 31 degrees. You make me sick, young man, I tell you. <laughs> and did I yeah. see today that you've actually booked for next year as well? So this is an ongoing situation, isn't it, really? Yeah, yeah, they booked me again in for November. I've just put in a, a guy called Liam Oliver to follow me in here. He's a DJ in Mallorca, working right. in an office. So when I contacted on Sunday, I owed him a gig anyhow. Yeah. And I said, uh, I used to look for a Maldives gig. And he went, tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, well, how about May? So it's already sorted. They've sent the contract this morning. Um, following him is a young, young guy from uh, um, Middlesbrough called Jordan Spashek. Right. Again, young kid. I talked to DJ in Mallorca many years ago. Yeah. And uh, he's coming in from August. He's actually been here before. Yeah. And they were surprised because of his age that how good he was. And I said, well, I've been teaching him since he was 10. So, right. You know, he, so, where he, did he meet him? Because obviously we used to do uh, tall trees uh, on a regular basis in, uh, in, in the borough. So, we know quite a few of the guys up there. Where did you meet this young man from? His dad's a, a yacht engineer in Mallorca. Oh right! Yeah. <laughs> is he well off? Is he? Is he? Uh, is it? Is it a, a privileged position, or is he just a great DJ? Uh, he's a very, very good DJ, and it's a great place to be because, you know, like I said, it's eleven hundred dollars a night to be here, and uh, you know, we've had Lance Strolls come here this year. He yeah. extended F one racing driver. We've um, we've had um, what's his name, Paul Allen, before he passed away. Yeah. Microsoft owner, he yeah. he came in, he brought the yacht, um, Octopus. Don't know right. if you've ever seen his yacht, but the thing is uh, an island on its own. Um, we've we've got a monster out here today, actually. Um, another yacht's turned up. I don't know who's on it at the moment, but um, I could see it through my binoculars from my villa. Yeah. So, oh, yeah, I get a, I get a villa too, which is... <laughs> don't rub it in, come on. <laughs> so tell me, we, we better put this in context. How does a boy from Birmingham end up in the Maldives on a DJ game? Ah, that is actually a good story. Because <laughs> in 1993, <clears throat> a friend of mine, Chris, who's an um, uh, ex-DJ, mm -hmm. he came to my apartment in Mallorca and uh, he collapsed on me. Right. And he was a bit sort of green and didn't look very well. I got into hospital. Mm -hmm. Turns out his lung had collapsed. Oh, right. So I took care of uh, all his insurance, got his parents to come over, sorted all that out. Um, in the end, his parents weren't too well off and everything's kind of run out of money. Yeah. I ended up sneaking him out of the hospital right. and getting him a plane ticket and sending him home. Right. Uh, fast forward, he marries a Indian girl called Reef. They get mm -hmm. married. She becomes a British diplomat right. and they get moved to Bangladesh. While they're in Bangladesh, while she's at work, he's the paid wife, if you like. Yeah, yeah. Um, and he starts working for Sheraton. They right. build the W Resort and um, they need a DJ for it. Right. Um, so he right. said, I know just the person. His old mate. <laughs> so that's how I ended up here. Um, cool. Through that, I've done a couple of other places. Somebody that was at W helped in the reform of this resort uh, 10 years ago. Yeah. And they said, when we start a DJ program, do you know anybody? And she said, you must get this guy. And that was me. Because, <laughs> I mean, I think to be fair, we, we, we need to put you into context because, as I say, you start, what, what was your first gig? What was your first gig in Birmingham, DJ wise? First gig in Birmingham? Wow. Uh, probably Mr. Moon's 1980. <laughs> oh, wow. Probably 1980, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I joined BBC in 1982. 
That was Pebble um, Mill, was it? Um, for I do my own radio show, and I did that yeah, for four yeah. years. Yeah. Cool. So, uh, and then from yeah. there, obviously, all around the uh, the UK to start with, ended up at what BCM? Uh, well, I, 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 I bumped into John one night, uh, Saunderson. Yeah. Coming back from a gig, we obviously we're from the same kind of neighbourhood. Right. And um, him and my brother uh, got chatting, and Chad Jackson was doing the DMC uh, <laughs> at Birmingham, nineteen eighty six. Yeah, yeah. And this would be what the DJ mixing competition, I presume. Yeah. It? Yeah, right. So yeah. we went down for that, and uh, Chad won it easy, which mm -hmm. we thought was a bit, why does he come down here to do it, you know, Manchester <laughs> boy? Uh, John and my brother came back and said, right, you're going in at Newcastle upon Tyne next Monday. And I went, <laughs> excuse me? Uh, and I went up there and smashed it. Yeah, absolutely. And from and, there, uh, onwards and upwards. From there, I did. I was the first UK DJ to do three UK finals. Right. Uh, beating Coxie on the way in 1987. No, this 88. Cox, we should point uh, out, not just some yeah, little kid. <laughs> those DMC early, early competitions were mad, weren't they? I mean, the number of people that entered those competitions that are now household names, it's just amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And go on. And so that was your launch pad from a DJ point of view. Where was your next major gig after that? Uh, I went out to Tenerife. Right. Um, for a holiday and... and People got cassettes of my music from mm -hmm. Birmingham, which was really weird. Yeah, um, yeah. But I was, I was, I was a bit amused. <laughs> but there was a couple of guys there that worked at the Hippodrome, like right. every now and then. You know, good-looking blonde-haired boys, and they came across and they said, "Oh, we saw you at the Hippodrome in '86." I went, "Really?" They said, "Yeah." Um, they said, "You should, you should play some stuff here." Mm -hmm. They said, "This DJ is going to challenge you," and I said, "What DJ?" And Marcus G. Who was yeah. DJing Tramps at the time? Yeah, he uh, he challenged me over the mic um, <laughs> in front of my girlfriend and everything. And I, yeah, yeah. I wasn't having that. So. <laughs> <laughs> and how many years so, at BCM? Uh, I've been in Spain now thirty-five years. Really? Is it that long? Yeah. <laughs> and of course, Wouldn't your change. manager at BCM was my warm-up DJ at Pearly Cinderellas. Did you really? Know? Gordon, yeah. John Osborne <laughs> and I, who was another uh, DMC champ, um, we decided we wanted a couple of warm-up DJs, and Gordon was one of the guys that came for it. Um, and I used to go to his mum and dad's pub in um, uh, Junction 7 on the, uh, uh, the M25. So, yeah, yes. give him my regards when you see him. Bless him. He's gone on a bit since then, a bit more than I have probably, but such is life. <laughs> yeah, well, Gordon ended up... Um, we became friends after I played Hollywood Romford. Right. And I I invited him to stay at mine. Yeah. And and basically from there it just grew. We became good friends and it it was still on. He's crazier <laughs> now. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so is he general manager? Is he director? Does he own the place? Where's he got to with uh, with uh, He's uh, general manager. Right. Um We've got a hotel called BH Hotel, and yeah. he's going to be running that this year, should we open, which is um, more outside space, yeah, yeah, pool yeah. parties, things like that. Yeah. Uh, and still being a part of BCM, because it's, it's had a big refit, 5 million euro refit. Yes, I've seen that. So what's its capacity? Um, you could still get 4,000 in there. It's huge, isn't it? It's amazing. And is it still chocolate block during five. the season? <laughs> I can remember um, playing with Snap when they were number one around the world and you, you could not get any more people in the club by 12.30, midnight. Really? Yeah. You know. And so I what, actually opened the mic and said, ladies and gentlemen, tonight I'm going to play what I want because you can't move. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was sardine. It was brilliant. I can imagine. Uh, yeah. And I, played, I started playing some soul and, and funky stuff before they came on, so, mm -hmm. um, some um, soul to soul and stuff like that. Yeah. And that's when I realised all the Scandies love that kind of music. Right. So then I started playing soul and funk before the laser, which is always at one thirty. Yeah, yeah. And then after one thirty, we would go bang, off we went. And what time did you run till in the morning? 
Uh, them days, nine, ten o'clock. <laughs> no wonder you've lost, lost your dreadlocks, I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hard living, mate. <laughs> they had to go. <laughs> so go on, tell me about the recording career. When did you make the move from DJing to um, making your own tracks? Uh, that started, wow. I think we made, I made the first track with a guy called Andre Jacobs. Right. Called, uh, and we called it FBK, Fat, Black and Kicking, because he was a bit <laughs> fat. <laughs> um, and the track was kicking. We did, um, tonight is party time, it's party yeah, yeah, time yeah. tonight. We did a version of that yeah. for his D-Zone record label. Right. Um, and it did okay. It, it, it was weird to play your own track in a club because it was yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. oh, people like it. You know, if you do it right, <laughs> people like it. Um, so, yeah, so then it was just a progression from that. Um, I, I suppose Welcome to the Dance was the first major piece of success I had, but yeah. I was 43 yeah. then, 42. Really? So I was a little bit, yeah, I was a, I was a little bit, oh, is this right? Um, should this be happening? Um I would been. I was in. It was winter. I was in UK. Yeah. Uh, I'd made the track in '99 in Belgium. Right. And then I had 200 promos, and they said, "Take those with you." So okay. And everybody was coming up and going, "What's that?" And I said, "Oh, it's my track." Brandon played it first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he yeah. he was warm. He was warming up for Paul Van Dyke. Right. Um, and Brandon played it as his last track as well. Yeah. And Paul yeah. Van Dyke went, "What's that?" And I said, oh, that's one of mine. He said, I need two copies. And I said, well, actually, the A side is part one and the B side is part two. Yeah. So he went to Amnesia the next day and he played part one and part two in a three-hour set. <laughs> and then, yeah, Mix Mag the next month and DJ Mag, that's all they talked about. What yeah. is this record that Van Dyke's playing? And, well, it, and it I was went, huge. I mean, I remember when I first got a copy of it. And it was like, it was just of the moment it was exactly what it should have been um so yeah it doesn't doesn't surprise me at all but i mean your website lists a whole bundle of tracks that you've been involved with either in different pseudonyms or working with different people and stuff yes is, is welcome to the dance the biggest one for you or have you got a little uh special favorite that we we haven't heard about um i think i think there was stuff i did with airscape who were Johan Gillen and Sven Mace yeah. back then. The stuff I did with Decane. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Who we talked to the other uh, We did a, actually, we did a couple of mixes with, of Duran Duran's Wild Boys. Right. Which uh, Paul was a little bit wary about doing it because it was Duran Duran at the time. Yeah. And nobody knew, you know, how the suing thing was going with artists and DJs. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah samples and so we never it never got a release um i, I would i would like to get hold of the parts and probably do it again now <laughs> um, yeah well, who's got the master uh well i'll, I'll ask paul actually he, he, he'll have them yeah yeah because you yeah. know he's working with sunny x again now they're actually putting their own label together producing their own material i didn't know that yeah what's what's that label called guys that we spoke to paul about was it utopia Something like Utopia, they're due to release some new material, which is going to be really exciting. So, but you see, these old boys, you can't put them down, can you? They just keep coming back for more, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. So, how long you have you got left in the Maldives before you have to go back to what were you doing? What, going back to, uh, to Spain, presumably? I'm going back May the 8th, right? To Mallorca. Cool. DJing again? Um, if it opens, I mean. I, I, I do a show for Radio 1 Mallorca. I yes. do the drive time show, yeah. 6 o'clock to late every day. Yeah. Today is Tuesday's Classics show. Right. So um, you probably won't hear me. Um, you'll, you'll hear the music. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it's all old school classics. Um, right. You know, uh, inner city, uh, just good stuff. And do you, what do you do? Do you mix them? When you say you don't, we don't hear you, do you just mix them and... and what on a pair of decks well, or is some, it pre-rex? Some shows I do non-vocal. Right. Um, yeah. You, you get all the jingles and everything else. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. when I'm playing classics like that, I believe that you know, if you don't know these classics, then you weren't in the scene. Yeah. That's the way I look at it. 
But how do you do it? How do you physically do it at the radio station? Do you play off CD? Do you play off off electric? Uh, electric, listen to me. Oh no, I, I use um, I use a controller. Um, yeah. I do all the mix there, and I've got yeah, you know, got everything up. here, yeah. so I can carry those, my on. My point doing is, those here. early eighties, nineties um, records, they're not made by computer, so to actually get the mix right is really difficult. Oh, so how do you manage? Uh, I'm, I've still got a good ear. <laughs> I've still got a good ear. I don't, I don't use the sync button. It's still, you know, I'm, um, I'm still the, I'm still the professional in everything cool. I do, whether it be with controllers I've got here. Um, for example, I've got a, a, a Vestax here. Yeah. Uh, um, hang on. Let me just see if I can. Yeah. So I've got a Vestax here. Yeah. Uh, 380. Um, I've got a Roland, uh, sorry, Royal Pioneer 400 over there for record box. Yeah. So I use the Vestax with Serato, the record, uh, the um, Pioneer with record box. Yeah. Uh, which does me good on the yeah. MacBook Pro, which is now broke at the moment because it won't start up. Bloody thing. Uh, <laughs> I've got, um, Logic on there and uh, Ableton, right? And then together with um, a few friends like John Riley, like the Riley Music Productions. Yeah, the, I, the I get reviews. ideas together. Yeah, and then yeah, you should know John. Yeah, he yeah. did some stuff for DMC. That's right. Um, yeah, and we um, we still knocking some bits out. Cool. So, yeah. is there anything scheduled? Can we get excited about anything? Any digital downloads coming? Uh. Not to get excited about yet because we're, like I say, we're in the process of doing some bits. Um, John's only just getting back into it. He was he was a little bit wary and about the whole music thing because he went off working for Stock Aitken and Waterman. I don't know if you know for about a couple of years. He was their studio That's keyboard right. player. Well, and, obviously, I worked with Pete, didn't I? So you yeah, know, we we have we have crossed He's now, paths a few times. So. <laughs> pardon? I said. Uh, because I used to work at PWL, then obviously I've met with John when he was there. So, yeah, I understand that. So, okay. that, funnily enough, we're talking to Pete next week, hopefully next week. So, we'll let you know what happens. Got a beard these days. <laughs> so, go Why? on, you were telling me. What's what's the next big step then for you? Um, well, like I said, a um, friend of mine, Wolfie, has come back in touch with Orchard Music wanting to sign... Uh, welcome to the dance for the digital market, which is great. Yeah. Um, I have to say, I was at a bit of a loss for a while of, of what to do with it. Yeah, yeah. Um, That's such a big record. So this is great for me. Um, mm -hmm. And then, of course, Wolfie said, well, why don't you do a 2021 version, you know, Welcome to the Dance 2021. And I said, actually, that's that's a great idea. It's Yeah, because some so, of those sounds have, have, have kind of gone out of favour, haven't they, really? So to actually revamp some of the sounds that are in there will really refresh it and push it back out, I think. So, yeah, I'm, I'm working on some new bits. Um, I've been working on stuff last year and the year before. Obviously, last year, everything ground to a halt for everybody. So yeah. I kind of went, take a holiday, you know. <laughs> cool. Well, we shall, uh, we shall look forward to hearing new stuff. Maybe there's something that we can put on my or my in the future. We shall see what happens. Absolutely. Des, it's been an absolute pleasure. Give us a plug. Oh. What's the website? Where do we get to, to see what you're up to and where do we find out what you're on, on about? Uh, you can find me at um, uh, desmitchell.net. Yeah. Um, we went .net purely because um, it was about 10 years ago and I'd, I'd got desmitchell.com sort of 20 years ago. Yeah. And the guy who controlled it, when Welcome to the Dance came out, he thought he could make money off me, as people do. Um, I just said, you know, don't waste your time. I'm not that type of guy. Yeah. Uh, so I, I basically took I took a step back. I'm, I'm 63 now, so <laughs> I don't stress about anything. <laughs> just, you know, if it's Trust stressful, I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's not for me. <laughs> And go on, one so, yeah, final I'm one. Good. If we wanted to get Alexa on uh, one radio, Malaka, what do we ask? Uh, if you um, if you uh, contact Radio One um, yeah. I'm there as Des Mitchell. You can see my drive time page. There's also my 
TMP show, which is the Mitchell Project, on a Saturday. Yeah. That's at 7 o'clock till 9, and that's two hours of um, my dance promos that I get still get sent lots. I go through them through the week, yeah. and I put together a, what I call a funk house session at the first hour, which is lots of funky house, cool vocal stuff, um, good grooves, and the second hour is a little bit more club house for the later hours. Those yeah. that like it after 2 a.m. sort of thing. Absolutely. Um, yeah. And then my Sunday morning show for In Demand Radio is the same as my Radio 1 New York show on a Sunday evening, which is Soul Kitchen, which is right up your street because it's Absolutely. all D-Train and <laughs> Alexander O'Neill and Chaka Khan and Luther Van Dross and Jackie Graham. It's just, it's just you know, people just lose their minds when they hear all Following in heaven. Absolutely. Cool. Des, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thanks very much. Enjoy your 31 degrees, you bastard. And uh, <laughs> hopefully we can, we can hook up really soon. <laughs> Okie dokie. My pleasure.